Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm really excited to show you the sneak peek of an upcoming visualization and design course that I'm building out that will be a recorded video series with demos. And a lot of the focus of this is going to be on walking through many of the features in the Power BI reporting environment. So you as the developer will be able to have a tool set and know what kind of features can be delivered to your clients to make sure you can build very effective reports that both look good but also make sense, deliver the data properly. So we're going to see just a small couple minute video as part of the actual course that I'm currently developing that will be out in the next month or so. But I wanted just to give you a little bit of a teaser so you can see what that would look like. So let's go ahead and check it out. Our next module is now going to talk about the idea of designing advanced reports. Primary topics for this section will include conditional formatting, drill through filters, visual interactions, syncing slicers, report tooltips, bookmarks, and custom visuals. And we'll wrap it up just like the last module with a conversation around recommended practices. Diving into the first topic of conversation, let's go ahead and talk about the availability of conditional formatting. And conditional formatting was originally added to Power BI as an option to apply to calculated measures inside of either table or matrix visuals. And there's two places where you can add conditional formatting. The first is in the fields well of the visualizations pane, which is explained by the animation you saw over on the left just a minute ago. And you can also add it from the submenu under the formatting pane as represented by the image over on the left. Now, while I will say you can officially add it from the second location, I typically never use this spot because it normally takes longer and more mouse clicks to get there. So it usually is just a longer process to add it from this section. So I almost entirely add it from the visualizations well, again, as you saw from that first initial animation in here. Now let's talk about the four types of formatting available for table and matrix visuals. Now it's important to note that background and font colors share the same format by settings, essentially meaning that everything that you can apply to them as far as rules or anything else is well explained is identical between the two. The only difference being is does the formatting apply to the background in any of the cells or does it apply to the font color in those cells? The formatting logic itself can be based on a few different things, either color scale, which will apply a gradient between the min and the max, creating a range. And to note, the min and max can be set to the lowest value or a fixed absolute value. And you have the option to add a diverging color, which would enable a third middle color if you choose. Though typically, I find that three colors can often start to become a bit noisy, so typically I will normally only put two colors in there inside of the range, and I don't often implement the diverging color. Then formatting logic can also be based on rules, which will apply colors based on one or more value ranges, each with a set color. And this logic will follow very similarly to the logic in a case when statement in SQL or a switch true in DAX. Essentially, it checks these one at a time in sequential order. And logistically, each value range will start with an if condition, continue into an and value condition, and then supply a color if that condition is found to be true. And last but not least, formatting logic can also be based on field value. And this will apply colors by using a calculated measure or a column that specifies a color, either using a text value or hexed code. And while we will implement these in the report, actually creating the field values, which our DAX measures won't be covered in this training, since that is model development. Though I will mention that field values are very great for reusing logic. If you could have a single measure that has logic for color formatting, that can be used over and over again, this will actually save you a lot of time because you can use it in multiple tables or visuals rather than having to, per visual, set up rule logic over and over again. So I will link you to a video down in the references for this video that will show you actually how to create field values and use them. And as I mentioned, custom logic can be created inside of a calculated measure to apply the desired color. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. So until next time.